and welcome back to Home Built Help's Tip of the Week. This week I have a question for you. What type of brake lines are you going to use on your home built aircraft? Will it be the plastic kind or the aluminum rigid tubing type? I'm not here to talk you into one or the other. There's nothing wrong with plastic at all. However, we do get a bunch of requests from people who received plastic with their aircraft kit and it is part of the manufacturer's recommendation in some cases to use the plastic how to upgrade or retrofit from the plastic to the rigid aluminum tubing and that's our tip of the week to show which parts and pieces you need to convert your system from plastic to the rigid aluminum tubing it's not difficult let's take a look one of the big differences between plastic and the rigid tubing is that all of our connections will be made with flared fittings and we'll discuss the type and part numbers that you may need for your project. And that also means that all of the hoses or rigid lines that you connect will also have appropriate nuts that screw right on to the flared fittings and provide a very nice leak free seal. Let's look at some of the components we're going to use to retrofit our brakes with the solid lines. Here's our tubing, here's our flex tubing, and then the various AN fittings that we need to complete the job. Let's start with the rigid tubing we're going to use for our brake line. This is called VersaTube 3003, available from your aircraft supplier. It's not really very rigid. You can bend it easily with your fingers and hands. You can use a tubing bender, bender if you would like, but it's certainly not necessary. We're going to cut it with a tube cutter so we get a nice clean cut. This is the 3 16 outside diameter size. That's a standard size, the 3 16 and that's what we'll use pretty much exclusively with our brakes. Now each of the ends needs to be flared. We'll flare this with a flaring tool because the way we connect our rigid line is with flare connectors and those will all be dash three connectors. The dash three meaning for three sixteenths tubing size. This is about 50 cents a foot or less and you really can't beat it and it is sure nice to work with. Next we need flexible brake hose and this is stainless steel braid on the outside and the ends are pre-assembled with 3 16 or dash 3 as we call it connectors for hooking up to the dash 3 flare fittings and these come in a whole bunch of standard lengths 6 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, 24 inches and you can actually have them made up to as many feet as you want. But off the shelf, these are pretty standard from just about any auto parts supply store, especially uh, racing auto parts stores. Uh, very common. Uh, they're about 10 bucks a piece, give or take, depending where you buy them and how long they are. Now, we're going to use these anytime we have some moving components, for example, between the master cylinders if they're attached to our brake pedals and of course our brake pedals move so there'll be some movement and possibly on our landing gear legs so that the leg can flex. So these are made to flex and they're just ready to go. You need to tell, you need to know how long you want them and that they have dash three fittings at the end. Now let's look at some of the fittings we'll use when hooking up our brake lines. To hook up our flexible hose or our solid line we're going to need flare connections. So for example this is a bulkhead fitting, a straight one, it's an 832, an AN 832-3. The dash 3 says what size the flare connection is. We're going to use dash 3 for 3 16 throughout. This is a bulkhead fitting because it not only connects two flare fittings together, it also allows it to be mounted onto a bulkhead or some other structure 
you simply drill a hole and place it through and then you use an AN 924 nut and that simply screws on. You go through one set of threads and then the other set of threads and your bulkhead or structure is in the middle there. Oftentimes we would like this but to take a right angle so we have an 833 it's just the same except it turns 90 degrees and again it's a bulkhead fitting so we can use a nut to attach it to some structure an AN a dash 3 and a dash 3 at the other end and that way we can take a turn so this is what I used in my plane to go through the floor and then below the floor back towards the brakes now we have a fitting or a nipple this is an 816 a straight one on one side is our dash 3 flare connection on the other side is a 1 8 inch NPT so where this is useful is for connecting our hydraulic lines to for example a caliper so these will be screwed into the caliper or into a master cylinder up where our brakes are located so this transitions from a caliper or a cylinder to our hydraulic line this takes the place of these types of fittings if you were using the plastic here's our eighth inch into the master cylinder or caliper and this is where the plastic line came from so we simply unscrew this if we had plastic and put in our 816, AN 816-3. If we want to come out of the cylinder or the caliper at an angle, it's just a slight variation. This is an 823, 45 degrees, our eighth inch and then our dash three flare. Or if we had a 90 degree, this would be an eight AN 822. So it just depends whether you want straight 45 degrees or 90 degrees coming out of your cylinders or calipers. We're almost done except we need a way to attach a flare fitting to the end of our VersaTube and that's where we're going to use a AN818 nut. Now this nut is simply going to slide over and it will attach, this nut attaches to any of the flares we looked at. So for example, in the case of our bulkhead fitting, the nut is what allows the rigid line to attach. Or in the case of our nipple, same thing. So any dash three flare fitting, this nut has its purpose of making the attachment. The proper sequence is to install, because the nut itself is not good enough to work, we also need what is called an AN819 sleeve. And this has a large portion on one end and a small portion on the other and here's the easier way to see it. The step one is insert the nut. Step two is to insert the sleeve and then we flare the end. And after we flare the end then this all makes sense because it will now fit with the end flared and we can attach this up. So the only thing we don't have left is the flaring of the end of the tube. A flaring tool is made up of these two components and it is relatively inexpensive and is used for all sorts of other size tubes other than our brake tubes. We also need a tubing cutter made for small tubes. The process of flaring a tube is relatively easy but requires a technique for a good flare result. 
leave a request in the comment section below the video if you would like a future tip covering flaring techniques. Let's look at a sample brake line installation. On this aircraft we start at the caliper down at the wheel with a flexible hose that runs up the gear leg. The gear leg of course flexes so the flexible hose will work out fine and then it transitions to our aluminum VersaTube through a straight through bulkhead connector just like the one we talked about and it's mounted to this bracket on the aircraft. The VersaTube then follows towards the center of the aircraft and it steers clear of the gear leg as much as possible where it goes to the center and heads to the front of the aircraft. Now the opposite wheel has exactly the same configuration of a flexible hose and then into the VersaTube. Both of these turn and go forward along the bottom of the aircraft covered and protected by this covering underneath the radiator and they come up right below where the rudder puddles are located and here we have a 90 degree bulkhead connector which allows us to transition to flexible hose once again because those go to the master cylinders. These cylinders move along with the rudder pedals. What's interesting is on this RV-12 aircraft, instead of using flexible hose along the gear leg, Vans uses the VersaTube all by itself. And with a loop at the very bottom, this provides a nice installation that allows the tube to flex along with the gear leg, and that works out just fine. We can disconnect the fitting to replace or repair the wheel and brakes at any time. And of course, this line of VersaTube can be replaced at any time because it is connected up at the fuselage with another bulkhead connector. And that should be enough for now, so everyone, please, back to building.